Hello, everyone. Welcome to our practicals today. And today we are going to have a look at total vertical uncertainty. For this practical, we will be working with a real world data and we will be focusing on uh, approximating or calculating a TVU in a single beam bathymetry. So you have the concept of how TVU actually works and you can actually compare your calculation with the standard that has been published by IHO. So I'm going to share my whole screen. The first thing you need to do is open an Excel uh, spreadsheet. So an empty spreadsheet, and then you can open your QGIS and remember to install the one that is version 2.18.24, okay? That's not the newest version, but that's basically what I like best because it's very stable and it could still run a lot of plugins. Uh, and actually QGIS is uh, pretty easy to, to see to or to download and to use. And you need to have a look at your data first. So this is your data. It's called smackdownbathymetry.dat. Uh, I have translated everything uh, in the header into English. So, okay. Uh, you can open it by clicking it uh, with right click and then you open it uh, with notepad. So it's edit with notepad plus plus. So you need to install notepad plus plus as I have told you before. And then, uh, the best thing about Notepad++ is actually you can see uh, everything in a very, very neat way. So you've got the numbers in here, uh, unlike the normal Notepad. So you can see that there are uh, 21, uh, 29 header in here. And the, head, uh, the header is going to be, you've got the title, and then you've got the file name, data type. You've got your projection system. This will be important when you plot your data into QJS, uh, your horizontal datum and the vertical datum. So you need to understand that the depths are still instantaneous, but you've got the tidal correction as well uh, beside that. So these are the nodes. So the survey line intervals are mostly 100 meters. The distance between the survey points are around 5.6 meters. So each of the points has a distance of around like 5.6 meters. And the tidal correction is obtained from two different islands, okay? So these are the columns, the title of each column. So you know what each column uh, corresponds to. So the first column, it corresponds to the date. Okay, so 2004-05-21, it means that it was taken in 21st um, of May, 2004. So it's quite a long time ago, but still you can use the data. And then uh, this is the hour. So this is the time when it was taken. So it's at 9 a.m. point something, something, something. So it's still in hour, but in decimal hours. This is your easting in meters, and this is your northing in meters. And then you've got uh, the depth in meters as well, and you've got your tidal correction in here. So if it's, uh, if it's not negative, then you need to add it, okay? And then uh, remember that your easting and northing is in this projection system or UPM zone 48 south. Okay, so you now you can go to your QGIS, okay? And then you just uh, forget this, this, these are my projects. But you, uh, instead of creating new map or whatever, you can just add a layer in here, okay? And then add the limited text layer, okay? So layer, add layer, add the limited text layer, click it, and then you will add your file. So remember where your file is. Uh, that's the file, semakdown, bathymetry, dot, dot. Uh, Double click in there. And you need to see, okay, this one is already there because I already imported it uh, first. But the most important thing in here is to see how many headers have you got. And you can see here, these are all the headers and you cannot use the data in the header. And you know already that we've got 29 header from the Notepad++, okay? So see, you've got 29 header. So we want to assign it in here, okay? So the number of header lines to discard is 29. And you can check, you can uh, 
subtracted and you can see, okay, this is still the header and 29 and then everything is the data. And then the other thing you want to check is this because the separator in here is tab. So you want to check that. And you want to uncheck this one because if we check this, then the first record is going to be um, another data, but it's not. You don't want that. So you want every single call, um, every single, um, not column, uh, line, every single line is uh, data, okay? And then you want them to be point coordinates. Uh, you want your X field, remember your X field is field three. If you forgot, you can go back to um, the data in here. Column three is your easting. So that's your X and your Y is going to be field four, okay? And then you click okay, then everything will be imported. Don't forget to choose your reference system. I already choose it in here, but if you, don't find it because I, I'm quite used to using this um, uh, projection system. If it's not already there, you can uh, look for it in here. So just um, type UTM zone 48S, and then you will find it in the bottom. Don't forget use WGS84 because that's your uh, horizontal data. So use this and okay. Okay, the second one you want to see is actually uh, if you are actually working in the right uh, projection and datum. So you want to go to the right corner. So here you click it and then you see if it's already UTM 48S. Okay, if it's there already, then it's good. So you click OK. Now, what you want to do is actually, it's going to be easier for you if you save it as a shape file. So you want to right click in your data, in your layers panel. I'm going to make it bigger. You save as, and then you save it somewhere you remember. Uh, I put it already, I've got, a, I've got a folder for this one. I already saved it, but I'm going to resave it. So save this one. Uh, make sure that you're doing it at uh, 48S WGS84, and then you want to just OK. OK, and you want to, well, I overwrite the file because I already have it. Now you've got two data. You've got the one that is from dot dot, and then you've got something that is dot SHP. You just, uh, you can just remove it, uh, the dot file, the one that came earlier. Uh, by clicking it and then click this one. So remove layer or group. Then you can remove it. Now you want to see how your data looks like. So you can right click on it and then open attribute table. In this attribute table, you can see all the fields that you've already got. And you can say that, okay, this one, sorry, I clicked it. So it's going to be... Um, um, sorted by that one. But basically, this field is your depth field, okay? So field five is going to be your depth. Now we're going to compute a T-view. If you remember, we can compute T-view at crossing lines, okay? So we can choose one crossing line. For example, this one, just an example. Uh, this one is actually interesting because it's got a lot of data. So in order to do that, you want to choose this, okay? Select features by area or single click. You can select the feature, so it's going to be selected. So it's basically at the range of uh, same area, okay? You can even try to uh, measure the distance between one to another. As you can see here, it's actually, it's around 25 meters. Okay, that's that's quite big. And then you can see this bit again. So that's 25 meters uh, as well. So they're quite far away, but basically it's still, uh, it's going to be still um, covering one area, one crossing area. So you know that, and you right click here again, open attribute table. 
and to see which feature you selected, you click show all features and click the show selected features uh, instead. Okay, so these are all your selected features. Afterwards, you can just, uh, it's already selected. So the only thing you can do now is uh, right click and copy cell content, and then you paste it into, oops, sorry, shouldn't be like that. So if you want to copy everything, I think you just um, press Control C, okay? And then you press Control V, then you've got everything in here. Okay, so now we are going to calculate uh, the depth, okay? The real depth, which is corrected by the, um, by the uh, types. So you want to do this plus this, and it's going to be the data that you're working with. Already, you've got two data, that are quite far away from what you expected, but that's okay because that's what we're going to look for. Um, for now, just leave it be, and uh, you can actually make a plot of the data so you know which data might need to be uh, deleted afterwards. So the next one is going to be, we are going to compute the TVU of this area. So you want to just put it at one place and you want to open your PowerPoint uh, at the other place. So you can see this step by step. So you go to uh, 19. Well, I think I didn't give you PowerPoint. I gave you PDF, but it's okay. So you can see here, the first thing you need to do is count uh, how many samples you've got. So in here, you can put n, n, yeah, and then count all the data that you want to count. So you've got nine data in here, and then you want to calculate the x bar or basically the average. So the average of the data is this. So it's around 3.8. And remember to make it into the same um, decimal places. So I just put it two decimal places because the original data is only two decimal places as well. Then you want to calculate your standard deviation or your S, but for your S, you need to have this, okay? That's basically the data minus uh, the X bar, okay? So that's going to be, just put it here. So that's your data minus, your average data, and you want to lock it by putting um, dollar signs uh, in between. So if you put dollar sign uh, in front of H, you put dollar sign in front of 13, then you will lock it. So when you copy everything, it's going to be, uh, this one is moving, but this one is stay, okay? So you've got everything in here and then you want to compute everything. So that's basically SQRT or the square root of, sorry, you want to, yeah, the square root of the sum of this, okay? So the sum of this, uh, but you actually, yep, the sum of these, but you want this to be, actually, we're going to put it here, okay. So that, okay, and then it's going to be uh, divided by n, which is this one, minus one, okay. So that's your S, okay? That's your uh, standard deviation. And then you want to compute your standard error. Don't forget to make it into uh, two decimals as well. So that's going to be S over uh, the square root 
of n, which is this one. Okay, so your standard error is uh, 0.25. Now, you want to estimate the confidence interval. That's going to be your CI, and your CI is your standard error times your Z alpha, which is 1.96. So that's going to be your CI. It's plus minus uh, 0.49. Now you want to compare this number. Okay, we'll put it in blue probably. You want to compare this number with the TVU that is standard. So in the standard TVU, you can open it in uh, slide 17. Okay, so you want to make it in just put it in here so you want order two order one because order one and or you see order one b and order one uh, a they've got the same a and b so just put order one and then you can put order special and order exclusive okay maybe uh well we rarely use order exclusive anyway but just put it so you can see how it looks like then you put your A and B in here for order one, that's one and 0 0.023. For order one, you've got, uh, that's order two, sorry. And then this is 0 0.5 and 0 0.013. You've got now 25 and 0 0.0075. And then you've got 0 0.15 and 0 0.0075. Now you can calculate your T view using the equation in here. So that's going to be the square root of A square plus B times you use the depth basically the x bar or the average depth okay and then that squared as well and then enter so those are your t views in each order okay and again you want them to be in um, so this one should be locked this should be locked that's better. Now we want to format the cell into two decimal as well. Okay, is that correct? Yeah. So that's that and that. Okay, that and that and that and that. Okay. Now we want to compare our number with this. Apparently, our calculation is already complying with the order two and order one. So that's good. Even it's very, very close, but it's already good. Okay. But you cannot say that it's in order special or order exclusive because it's too big. So what you need to do now is to do this TVU computation in at least five points. Okay. So this is your first point you want to just make it TVU 01, and then make TVU 02, 03, 04, and 05, and then you can compare to each other. So you've got a lot of points in here that you can choose, and you should uh, remember which one is switch, okay? So uh, for example, you choose this one for your first TVU, you can choose this one probably for uh, your second one, Etc. As long as it's still a within this data and as long as it's crossing points. But normally you would need to do this TVU in uh, all of them and you can automate it. But the idea here is just to have a feeling of how TVU is actually looks like. Okay, good luck. And if you've got any question, you can always ask me because I will be there um, during the practical session. Good luck and see you.